Hello friends, this video on live part 6 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So now the main part that is how image formation takes place. Now for reflection to take place or for image formation to take place, we need smooth surface. Reflection doesn't happen on all surfaces and reflection doesn't happen that good on all surfaces. So we are going to introduce and we are going to talk about mirrors now because mirrors are the ones which produce images. So let us introduce plane mirrors. Plane mirrors are the most simplest type of mirrors. There are spherical mirrors also which exist but you will learn about spherical mirrors in your higher classes, not now. So plane mirror is a mirror with a flat reflective surface. So the name itself plane, plane means flat. It is neither curved, it is not concave, no convex, nothing. It is just a flat reflective surface. Reflective surface, the surface is so smooth that reflection can take place on this surface. That is why it is a reflective surface. Examples of plane mirrors, the normal mirrors which you have in your house, the dressing table mirror where you can see yourself and where you look exactly the same. If you have ever visited some museums or some amusement parks where you have different types of mirror, in some of them you appear to be smaller than how uh, than the way you are. In some mirrors you appear to be bigger than the way you are. But in plane mirrors you will always appear the same as you are. So your size in the mirror and your original size both are going to be the same. So plane mirrors, we come across plane mirrors in our day to day life. So here we are going to talk about how images are formed with plane mirrors. So now let us try to understand how image formation takes place by plane mirrors. So on the screen you can see an object which is nothing but a simple flower vase and this is your mirror. So normally this is how we represent mirror to show that this side is the reflective surface. So this is plain, this is polished and plain. So this is where the light reflects and this is the back side of the mirror. So that's how it is represented. Now we will see how, where exactly an image is formed. How do we know that where will the image be formed for a particular object? Now there is a very simple concept behind it. Now, once the object is there, so first of all, in order that image formation happens, what has to be there? Light. Presence of light is must. Now when light is there, what will happen? This particular object, for example, here it is a flower vase. So flower vase obviously doesn't produce its own light, but it can reflect the light which is produced by somebody else, maybe the sunlight or the light of the bulb or tube or whatever. So now this vase, will the rays coming from this vase will fall on the mirror correct so these rays will be what these are the incident rays because it is not a single ray which is falling on the mirror a bunch of rays a beam of light will be falling from the object to the mirror and once it strikes the mirror each of these rays will undergo reflection and these are the reflected rays Right? So rays originating from object actually meet at another point after reflection. So if you see here, all these rays, they originated from one point that is from the object. After reflection, they all scattered like this. But if you actually try to draw them behind the mirror, if you try to join them, then you see that there is one point where all of these rays meet. So this point where the reflected rays meet, that point is the image for that object. So that is why the image is formed here. So in simple words, the point where the bunch of reflected rays meet is the location of the image. Now, there can be two types of images which, are, which can be formed. Now, one image is the one where the rays actually meet. So the reflected rays actually meet. But in this case, do you see the reflected rays actually meeting? We actually drew this uh, dotted lines to make it meet virtually, but actually it is not meeting, right? Because this side is behind the mirror. So behind the mirror is something which is virtual, which is not real for us. So for us, real means this side of the mirror. That is where we are located, where objects are located. But if you look at this picture, here these reflected rays don't seem to meet. 
So that means here the rays are actually not meeting. So if the rays would have met actually in that case, the type of image is called real image. Otherwise, if the rays appear to meet, they are called virtual image. So in this case, this is a virtual image or real image. Yes, this is a virtual image because here the rays are, the reflected rays are not actually meeting, but they appear to meet. So if you try to extrapolate them using dotted lines, it, it feels as if they will meet at this point. So this type of image is called virtual. So this is how, this is the basic concept behind image formation by a plane mirror. Now, if you talk about plane mirrors, plane mirrors will always, most of the time, it will form virtual images. But that doesn't mean that real images do not exist. Real images are also formed by mirrors like the concave mirror and the convex lens. They form mostly real images. Now, how do we know that how can you experimentally see that plane mirrors cannot form real images? Because if if um, any mirror is able to form real image, then that image should, can be obtained on a screen, right? Because screen is something real. But in case of uh, a plane mirror, the image is always behind the mirror. So if you stand in front of the mirror, you see yourself behind the mirror, right? But you do not, you cannot see yourself on another screen beside you, correct? So that's how you can say that uh, the image here is obtained on the other side of the mirror. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more educational videos with a better experience. Please do not forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel for latest updates. Thank you once again.